welcome back to my video series. I'm Dr. Kay Verde and today I'm going to be talking about what I look for in a probiotic when I prescribe it to my patients. This is a topic that's really important to me because I find that people will often go to the natural health food store and they'll buy a supplement thinking that it'll help them with a symptom or medical condition that they're facing. And then they conclude that natural medicine doesn't work because this supplement didn't work for them. And this could have been for a couple of reasons. The first one being that the supplement wasn't necessarily indicated specifically for uh, treating the cause of their medical condition or their symptoms. Uh, the second thing is that a lot of the times these over-the-counter supplements are lower in quality and they can actually contain a lot of fillers um, and ingredients in them that can actually do more harm than good for your health. The supplements that I tend to prescribe to my patients are really high in quality. They've gone through um, multiple uh, tests to see that they're safe and effective for my patients to use. And I prescribe them based on the underlying causes of their conditions, not necessarily on the disease condition or symptoms that they're experiencing. So with probiotic supplements, the first thing I look for is whether or not they're refrigerated. And if they are refrigerated, I like to make sure that they've been refrigerated the entire time from manufacturing to the shipment to when they're on the shelf uh, in the health food store or wherever you're buying them. And this is important because probiotics contain living things, they contain bacteria, and it's important for the bacteria to be at a stable temperature. Sometimes, uh, you know, the warm temperature while they're being shipped or if they're not kept in a refrigerator, they can actually die off and the supplement that you're buying may not necessarily have active living probiotics in them. The second thing that I look for is the types of bacteria that are in the supplement. There are a lot of probiotics out there that just contain many different species of lactobacillus. But there's also Bifidobacterium, as well as Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a yeast that's also known to be a probiotic, um, as well as a number of other bacteria out there that are really helpful for your gastrointestinal tract. And so my general rule of thumb is that the more different types of beneficial colonies you can get in your supplement, uh, the better the re-inoculation of the gastrointestinal tract will be since diversity a lot of the times is key in good health. The next thing I look for is the number of colony forming units in one capsule. And colony forming units are basically the measurement of how potent or how many bacteria are in the probiotic. And I like to see anything from 25 billion to higher although it really depends on the disease condition that I'm treating. And so I do individualize the dosage that I recommend based on the patient, their symptoms, and what they're going through at the time. One thing that's important is to note how many is in one capsule, and you can see that by looking at the top of the, the label on the probiotic supplement. So the next thing to do is to look at the other ingredients on the probiotic supplement. If you see a long list of ingredients that you can't really uh, pronounce and you're not really sure what it is, I would steer clear of that supplement. It means that there's a lot of added fillers in it. And fillers generally are unnecessary and I tend to conclude that the supplement is lower quality when there's a lot of fillers in it. Finally, what I like to look for is whether or not the probiotic supplement is in a capsule. I prefer probiotics to be encapsulated because in order to get to the small and large intestine, the probiotic needs to bypass the acid in the stomach. And encapsulating probiotics tends to help bypass the stomach acid and keep your body from digesting the bacteria in the stomach and it allows the bacteria to go into your small intestine and your large intestine where is where we want this bacteria to be. Some probiotics have an ingredient called fructooligosaccharides in them and what this is is it's a prebiotic. It's meant to support healthy bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. It's basically food to help them grow and thrive. And for some patients I think this is a great idea. 
For other patients who tend to have uh, more sensitive stomachs, I tend to hold off on recommending fructooligosaccharides. Everybody's unique and so it really depends on their own health history. I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, please leave any questions or comments that you may have and stay tuned for next week. I'll be doing a fun video on setting up a morning routine and the health benefits of having a morning routine.